So I picked up Legend Nano S for a family member as part of the uh, recent Black Friday sales and just thought I'd take the opportunity to run through the process of setting one up from scratch. In this video, I'll start with what you get in the box, run through how to set it up, install the software all the way through to sending and receiving your first transaction. I'll also just be offering a few of my little tips along the way uh, that include things that can uh, help boost your security or the resilience of uh, your setup that aren't quite covered, uh, at least to my satisfaction in the documentation. I'll be using a Ledger Nano S, but the process for a Ledger Nano X is identical. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. All right, so this is what we start with, shrink wrap and all. There we go, this is the Ledger Nano S. I got a pretty blue one. Once you unpack everything, this is what you got. So you got this note here that talks about why there isn't anything like uh, security tape or that sort of security theater, just because the design of a Ledger Nano is that it is uh, tamper-proof and actually checks its genuineness uh, when you connect it to Ledger Live. Uh, you've got the start instructions. We've got three recovery sheets, uh, some sort of keychain and uh, lanyard bits and pieces as well. Standard micro USB cable to add to the collection and uh, of course the Ledger device itself. All right, so we'll just follow the bouncing ball and uh, start on this process here. Now, before we go any further, you'll notice the recovery sheets are blank. So if your ledger comes with a uh, pre-filled recovery sheet that says here, use these 24 words or use this seed, you need to stop straight away and uh, return it to wherever you got it from because you're about to get scammed. Uh, your device will generate a fresh recovery seed the first time you turn it on and we'll run through that process in a sec. All right, so we'll just go to their website. Won't worry about that, won't worry about that. Okay, so here we go, the four steps. Set up in four easy steps. Looks good. Okay, well we'll start by installing Ledger Live. Let's install it on Windows. And we'll just stick with the defaults, they're perfectly fine. And we'll run Ledger Live. You can choose the mode, we'll just stick with the defaults on light mode. So we're just gonna say, set up new device. We have a Legend Nano S. If you had an X, obviously you'd click that and we will say continue. Okay, so the first step here is to choose our pin. So we're gonna connect the ledger to our computer. So we'll connect our device. A bit snug, but there we go. And when you see these little arrows, on the left or the right of the screen, we basically can just navigate by clicking the right or the left button to go forward or backwards through the instructions. And that's the same for pretty much everything. So we can read those instructions and it gives us the instructions. And we're gonna click both to select and that's gonna set up as a new device. So first thing we are gonna do is choose a pin code. So look, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to choose one, two, three, four, but obviously you need to uh, pick something that is not gonna be so easy to guess. It's also worth avoiding a pin that you use on things like credit cards or other services or devices. There we go, then we type it in again. And again, opting for something longer and more complex is better because at the end of the day, if you forget your pin, you can just reinitialize the device with your seed. Okay. So now we're up to the write down recovery phrase step. So we'll just say continue on here. It's really important to pay attention to this stuff over here in the red in that anyone who has your recovery phrase also has your crypto assets. So don't just take a photo of it. Here's the reminder, don't use a device with a pre-installed pin or recovery phrase. Store your recovery phrase in a safe place out of sight. So don't just do this step in front of your webcam uh, or something like that. Uh, and again, Ledger does not store your private keys, nor will it ever ask for them. So your, your 24 word seed will only ever be entered on this device. Uh, that is it. You will never ever be asked to enter this into Ledger Live or any other wallet. Your device can't be hacked, but you can. And how that tends to happen is you might be shown very convincing looking emails, text messages, software or websites that tries to trick you into entering in your seed or your passphrase uh, somewhere other than this device. 
The other tip for this step is uh, if you can, it's better to use a pencil rather than a pen uh, just because your pencil is less likely to run if it gets wet uh, or fade over time. So that's a little tip as well. So we'll click next and we have word one. So you can see that it says muffin. So BIP39 seeds aren't case sensitive. So you can write it all in uppercase or all in lowercase, it won't matter. And once we've written down the words, it's actually going to run through and we're going to verify them. So we have to select word one, which is muffin. And if you get any of the words wrong, it will actually tell you straight away, like I just did. All right, and it gives us this message here, which is important. These 24 word seeds are your only backup. Keep them in a secure place. Never share them with anyone. And then press both buttons and continue. Um, so it's important that you keep this. And uh, again, you wanna make sure you keep this in a place where if this gets destroyed or damaged, this doesn't get destroyed as well. So don't just store this in the drawer with this in its box. This seed phrase is your wallet and this Ledger Nano just allows you to create it, store it and use it in a secure way. Uh, one day this Ledger will fail and that's true for all hardware wallets. Uh, so it's important that your seed phrase backup works. And if you wanna back up your seed phrase on something more robust than paper that's gonna survive, uh, you know, water and fire and all those kinds of things. I've done a number of videos that look at different metal seed storage devices and uh, they're actually quite affordable now. And if you wanna help me out in the process, there's affiliate links for those in the description. So we're done with that processing. We're gonna take this, store it in a safe place, uh, ideally in a tamper evident and resilient kind of way. You might also consider using the other cards to make some copies of it. Though I would suggest that if you make any copies of your seed that you run through the recovery check process just to make sure that you haven't introduced an error somewhere when transcribing the seed. Okay, so we can now say continue. And here's the security checklist one last time just in case you weren't paying attention at any point so far. So did you choose your own pin? Yes. Uh, again, if you didn't, you need to stop straight away. Did you save your own recovery phrase? Yes. Is your device genuine? And when you say check now, it actually will check on the device itself. So we'll press both buttons together and now we're on the dashboard. There we go. So we want to allow Ledger Manager, we're gonna click both buttons at once and now it's gonna check our device's genuineness. Yes, your device is genuine. We are good to go. So time for the password lock. Now this password is for Ledger Live only. Uh, resetting Ledger Live does not affect any of your crypto assets. And uh, if all this stuff around seed phrases, pin and passphrase is getting confusing, I've actually done a video that talks about that as well. And just for the sake of simplicity in this video, I'll just set a basic password, which is password. And we'll say continue. Uh, you can choose whether you want to opt in to the analytics and the bug reporting for Ledger. Again, this is something that impacts your privacy, uh, not your security. And they have more information about that if you want to know. And you're now ready. So let's open Ledger Live. So you have to accept their privacy policy, which is uh, pretty standard sort of stuff. Confirm. And there we go. This warning up here is important to know and there are ongoing phishing scams affecting Ledger Live users. So if you receive a text message or an email or something like that that says you need to do a firmware update or jump onto some website and uh, it prompts you to enter your seed phrase, this is a scam, you need to stop straight away. Uh, and again, there's a full article that talks about that here. So we'll just close that for now. So the first thing you wanna do is go into the Ledger Manager. And that's where we're gonna upgrade the firmware on the device, as well as install the apps for the cryptos we're going to use. So there we go. So this just came brand new with firmware 1.6. So we'll just do that update now, because this is a good time to do that while we're setting everything up. And uh, as you can see here, you do need to make sure you have your recovery phrase on hand to do a firmware upgrade, which uh, we have, because we just set it up. So now is the perfect time to upgrade the firmware. So we'll just say continue.
There we go. So we want to make sure that the identifier on the uh, ledger live matches uh, what we see on the screen in the four lines, just to make sure nothing is tampering with the firmware that is going onto our device. And we'll say perform update. So now we type in our pin, that's the one we set right at the start. So in this case, I've just set one, two, three, four. Alrighty, and we are finished. So we'll just close that and uh, we'll unlock the device again. Okay, and we'll allow Ledger Manager. Okay, so let's install some apps. So say we had uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, let's just say Litecoin that we had that we all wanted to store on our ledger so we can install them. And uh, if all of the apps don't fit, uh, it's important to know you can actually remove them from your ledger without like deleting all the crypto. Um, so it's not a big deal if there's not enough space to uh, have them all on there at once. There we go, so they are done. And uh, we'll just click manage my accounts and we could also get to their uh, using this accounts button here in a second. So we'll just go to manage my accounts and we'll just say, yes, I want Bitcoin. Open the Bitcoin app. Fortunately, now it does it for us. So we just have to confirm it on the ledger. There we go. Now you'll notice here with Bitcoin, you're given two options. Now native SegWit is the uh, most modern type of address type for Bitcoin and SegWit is sort of an older style. But the thing is some wallets and things will not support uh, this native SegWit address format. So your best bet probably is to just go with native SegWit, but if you run into trouble uh, to go back through the add account workflow and add the SegWit account, but I'll just add both for now. There's no harm in adding more. So I'll just close that and I'll just show you the other way to add accounts. So basically, um, when you log into Ledger Live, this is the screen that you'll see by default. So if you just click on the accounts page, we're also gonna add an account for uh, the Litecoin. So we'll just do that. I guess we need to quit the Bitcoin app first. There we go, open Litecoin. All right, and we'll do the same with uh, Litecoin. We'll just add both SegWit and native SegWit, and uh, that's done. And we'll also just add the Ethereum as well. So we'll just say continue. We'll close the Litecoin app. We want to open Ethereum, yep. All right, and that's our Ethereum. So basically now you've got the accounts and what you would do is uh, if you wanted to deposit into this from say an exchange or another wallet, you'd go into the account that you like. So I'll just use this uh, native SegWit Litecoin account and you would hit receive. So you can select the account again, just in case you had the wrong one, but we'll just leave it as a uh, Litecoin one native SegWit. We'll say continue. We're gonna have to go back into the Litecoin app Here we go. Okay, now you'll notice that on the screen of your computer, you've got a Litecoin address and there's also the address on the screen here. So we wanna just make sure that the address on the screen matches exactly the one on the Ledger Nano. You can actually leave this address on here for as long as you like, basically. So I'll usually then just go into the wallet or the exchange or something that I'm sending from. And I'll then make doubly sure that on the wallet or exchange I'm sending from that the address matches exactly the one that is here. And then I will send that transaction. I've sent that now. I guess and we'll accept that that was good. So we'll say approve. 
There you go, address shared securely. So we'll say done. Now, if we just wait for a second, that transaction that I sent, there it is, uh, has appeared here. So that's now the uh, one Australian dollar that I sent that has now appeared in that Litecoin uh, account and it's just waiting to be confirmed. So you can see its status there is not confirmed. So um, that is great. And if I just wanted to send funds out of my ledger uh, to an exchange or something else like that, I'll just say send and basically I'll just scan the QR code that I'm sending to. And there we go. And I'll say continue. I'll just send max just because I'm doing a demo here and I'll just leave the fees of the default for the demo but you probably do want to pay attention to that if you're sending on like Bitcoin or Ethereum and the network is uh, congested at the time. So I'll just say continue. Um, so there's the summary of what I'm wanting to do. And I'll say continue. Okay, so now what we can see is that transaction being confirmed on the ledger. So we can review the output. So that's the amount of Litecoin that I was sending and we can see the address here in the screen of the Ledger Nano and that matches exactly the wallet that I got the address from. Uh, so again, you wanna make sure all those details are correct and you can just say accept. And then you can also just check the fees and make sure those are correct and accept. And if they aren't correct, you can just keep going across and say reject or if you just unplug the device, that'll automatically reject it too. But we'll just say accept and send. And there we go. So that transaction is now sent and uh, we can see the information about it. And uh, this view in Explorer will also just take us to an online block explorer as well, where we can see the transaction on the blockchain. But there you go. So that's how you send and that's how you receive. So there you go. That covers all the basics. And as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process. And uh, you know, just make really, really sure that you uh, secure that recovery phrase. Don't just leave it lying around because uh, that is your wallet. And uh, yeah, if you get into trouble or get stuck anywhere, just be sure to leave a reply and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.